I was in medical school in August of 2010 when I had a diving accident and had my spinal cord injury. I've had a number of pressure ulcers. It was a bigger disruption of my routines than my spinal cord injury was, ultimately. When patients arrive in the rehabilitation unit, they're generally a short time after their injury, so maybe a week or sometimes less. And at the beginning, the patient is in terror. All they can think is that they can't move and they want to be able to walk. I think the psychological aspect a lot of times is the hardest part of a spinal cord injury. You come in being independent and now you need someone to wipe your bottom. You need someone to feed you. You need someone to do your basic cures you've been doing since you're two. So we start to teach them about how they're going to have a new normal. Different ways of taking care of themselves to do all of the normal things in a slightly different way. We are a multidisciplinary team when we work here and so we work collaboratively as a team. And that team includes the physical therapists, the doctors, the nurses, recreational therapists, rehab engineers, and most importantly, the patients, families, friends, their children. And then social workers, discharge planners, large team to make sure we're addressing every aspect of the patient's life, their family's life, their social supports, their ability to be able to get out of the hospital and on to the next step of life back in the community. It's important that we're changing positions even when we're in the wheelchair. Because the first thing I introduce patients to is pressure relief because taking care of their skin is one of the most important issues to help them down the road to stay healthy. Pressure ulcers are a big problem for patients who can't move around and relieve pressure easily. We see this in patients with spinal cord injury and patients that are uh, bed bound for other reasons. I never had a pressure sore before, didn't even recognize, didn't know what it was. It's really, really not fun to have a pressure sore. I really would not wish it upon my worst enemy. Pressure ulcers are pretty special kinds of wounds. They're not just a tear in the skin and they're not just a cut in the skin. When that pressure builds up between the bone and the outside world, the damage happens all the way through. And sometimes the tissues that get hurt the worst are the fat and the muscle under the skin. So often, by the time you see an unhealthy spot on the skin, the damage is already all the way down to the bone. And pressure ulcers that are very deep and are open for a long time can actually be life-threatening. We have staging when it comes to pressure sores. So we have stage one, which is just redness that doesn't blanch. Stage two, which is through the epidermis. Stage three, which is into the epidermis or the fatty tissue. And then stage four, which is all the way through the muscle and to the bone. And that can surprisingly happen from just being in the bed. Come on this way, buddy. If it's a stage one and it's not through the skin, most of the time you turn on back and forth within 15, 20 minutes, a lot of times within a day, that'll go away. Stage two, we do a lot of creams, a lot of turning, a lot of pressure relief. The problem is, is when you get to the threes and fours, those are extremely difficult to heal. Sometimes they can get infected, they can get osteomyelitis, and they have to be on IV antibiotics. We're gonna switch to any of the other side. I recently had a surgical procedure and then I was sick after that in ICU for just a day and not quite as aggressive as I normally am. It within a matter of days went to a stage three. It's a difficult process and it's one that you have to st stay on constantly uh, to heal. It's, it's almost worse than the injury itself. When a patient's laying in bed, some of the areas most at risk for developing a pressure sore are directly over the tailbone, the sacrum, and pressure in that area comes about when the patient's laying flat on their back. Turning has to be done quite regularly to prevent prolonged pressure over those bony areas. Here in the hospital, every two hours is the standard, and after discharge, that's what we are teaching our patients and families to continue to do as well. You absolutely cannot leave somebody for eight hours in the bed. They will wake up in the morning with sores. 
So from day one, we're talking about pressure relief and why it's important. And a lot of times you'll hear them say, well, I, I didn't get any sleep last night because they turned me. Well, we reinforce the fact that they have to because we're protecting their skin and we're making sure that skin doesn't break down. I try to every day, every treatment session, all the time, just reinforce. When was the last time you did pressure relief? We got to take care of your skin. We got to make sure you don't get any sores. In a scenario of a more serious pressure wound that may require surgery to fix, the patient needs to be restricted to laying on their stomach in bed for a prolonged period of time, maybe months, to allow the surgery site to heal. The first steps to address a pressure ulcer from a surgery standpoint are, number one, to remove all the unhealthy tissue. So that usually requires one or more debridement operations where we remove unhealthy tissue. Closing a pressure ulcer is not as simple as stitching the skin together. We have to actually bring in more tissue in the form of a flap, typically, to cover that area. The choices for that flap uh, are limited. Uh, we typically have to use tissue, and by tissue I mean skin, fat and muscle, either from the buttock area or from the thigh area, which means big incisions and moving tissue around to cover the wound. If we do surgery, that area is always going to be more compromised because it's going to be more of a scar tissue when it heals. Scar tissue is not as flexible, it's not as durable, so that area is always going to be more susceptible to skin breakdown again in the future. And so you're going to have to make sure that you do pressure relief more often and really even take more critical care of that area to try to prevent sores from redeveloping. One of the things that was mentioned to me during surgery was like, oh yeah, uh, we expect the surgery to go well. There's an 80% chance you're, you're going to have breakdown again in this area. Although the main risk factor for a pressure ulcer is pressure, there are other things that can also make it easier to get a pressure ulcer. We think about things like friction and shear when you're pulling and pushing on the skin. Also moisture. Patients who have a problem with continence, for example, if there's a moist environment by those pressure areas, that can make it much more likely to ulcerate. We need to carefully make sure that we're staying clean and taking good care of the skin with proper cleaning and moisturizing to make sure that it doesn't get too dry or too wet. Early on in the course, it's a priority to educate the patients, teaching them techniques for shifting their pressure in a wheelchair or in bed teaching them how to use the wheelchair, a power wheelchair, for instance, to do the pressure reliefs. We also work with the patient to try to teach them how to direct their own care, because it's really important for them to know what their care is, what they need. And a lot of times for patients, that's the hard thing. I don't want to go home and ask for help. I never had to ask for help before. I was independent. Your family has agreed to take care of you at home. They have made that contract with you and it is a lot to ask and it's a lot for them to give, but they're giving it and you need to make sure that they're taking care of you. This is your body. You might be paralyzed, but you have a voice and you really need to be your best advocate and direct your cares and say, hey, it's been 45 minutes. Is somebody going to be around in 15 to make sure I get this pressure relief? Did you turn me last night every two hours? In my mind, the best way to treat a pressure sore is to never get it in the first place. And that's why I think it's important that we educate patients, especially patients who have new spinal cord injuries and their families, to work together to make sure these don't happen. At this point, it's just not a game you really want to play. As easy as it is to take care of simple pressure ulcers, it's equally difficult dealing with them when they get serious. You can get to a point where your life really just revolves around this stupid little thing that's pretty easy to prevent. As I go home, I'm going to make sure that I keep on the pressure uh, relieving and um, uh, so I do not develop any more pressure ulcers. If you don't speak up, you will develop a sore. It's a perfect example of how debilitating they can become if you don't stay on top of it.